Vaharu is an orphan teenager who doesn't like seeing trouble. Therefore, he usually takes all the responsibilities on himself. His mother died when he was still a little child. This incident made his heart soft for lonely creatures. That's why he can't help himself when he sees a poor cat on the street and brings it home. He names the cat Kuro based on its black color. The next day when Maharu returns back home he finds an intruder there but when sunlight shines in, the intruder turns back into Kuro. He's actually a lazy vampire called Sleepy Ash. When Maharu calls him Kuro while he's in human form, it establishes a temporary contract between them. In the next 24 hours, they have to stay within a specific distance and the contract will be cancelled afterward. However, it can be made permanent by letting Kuro suck Maharu's blood. Within a contract, the vampire can only drink his master's blood and in exchange, he has to obey the master's orders. Maharu doesn't want to deal with this trouble and takes the cat to show to his friends as rumors about vampires have been circulating in the city already. Suddenly another vampire named Berkia appears on the street who brutally attacks Maharu's friend Ryusei. Berkia proceeds to attack Maharu too but Kuro saves and drags him away. Maharu doesn't want to run away. After his mother's death, his family was waiting for someone to step in and take responsibility of him. His uncle was the only one who cared and took him in. Now Maharu also wants to be that someone who steps forward to take responsibility. He lets Kuro drink his blood making him Maharu's servant or also known as a servant. He orders Kuro to defeat the evil vampire. After getting attacked, Berkia turns into a doll and runs away, but warns Maharu about his powerful master Tsubaki who is after the destruction of the humans. The next day, no one in the city remembers the vampire incident except Maharu. While coming back from school, Maharu mysteriously transfers into another dimension where he meets Tsubaki. There were originally seven servamps who are considered siblings. However, Tsubaki calls himself the eighth servamp and he gets offended when other servamps don't recognize him. Maharu tries to convince Tsubaki that he's just lonely and he should face his insecurities then others will understand him too. Unfortunately, Tsubaki wants to gain attention by killing his siblings and human beings. Naharu and Kuro are saved by another servant and are taken to a huge mansion owned by Misono Erasuan. He's a rich boy who also has a servant under his control. Misono introduces Maharu to his servant of Lust Snow Lily, the same servant who saved them earlier and also the one who cleared the memory of vampires the previous day. Misono tries to threaten Maharu to be his servant and let him control the powers of Kuro against Tsubaki. Maharu refuses to give in and runs away. He reaches a place where a lot of children are kept. These children are subclass vampires created by Lily just like Berkia is created by Tsubaki. Usually the subclasses are used to protect their master but Misono doesn't think the same. He wants to protect everyone. Realizing this, Maharu agrees to help Misono not as a servant but as a friend. Misono has a lot of knowledge about servamps. He tells Maharu that the servamps master is called an Eve and he can create a weapon using his servamps power. Later Maharu goes to meet his childhood friend Sakuya but he doesn't tell him anything about the vampires. Maharu trains with Misono and becomes able to cast a weapon which is a spirit broom but he can't gain full control over it. The next day when Maharu goes to school he can't find Sakuya and decides to visit his house. While walking there, his memories of Sakuya start to fade away. Meanwhile Sakuya calls him from behind and takes him to a shady place. Tsubaki and Berki are there too. Sakuya is also Tsubaki's subclass vampire who has been with Maharu for just a year but manipulated his memories to make him believe that they are childhood friends. Sakuya is offended because Maharu lied to him last time and is ready to take revenge. Maharu is having mixed feelings and can't concentrate therefore his blood will not give power to Kuro either. Fortunately Misono comes over to save him but gets seriously injured. Maharu can't stand this anymore and forms his weapon to attack Sakuya. Surprisingly, Sakuya doesn't fight back. As a person who doesn't age, Sakuya just wanted to spend a few years with Maharu and his other friends, and then disappear from their lives. That's the happiness he aimed for. Sadness, regrets and darkness have started to build up inside Maharu. Kuro wakes up and bites Maharu, taking in all his dark energy. However, Kuro can't control it either and it starts to fall out, drowning everyone near him. When Sakuya sees Maharu in danger, he reaches out to save his friend. Suddenly another servant comes over and stops Kuro. He's the servamp of Envy Doubt Doubt who comes along with his Eve who's another weird guy. Misono is taken away for treatment while the mysterious Eve offers help to Maharu. If he ever wants to nullify the contract with Kuro, 
But this is not what Maharu wants. He wants to gain control over his power so he can protect his loved ones. Maharu skips school and wanders the streets where he comes across Tsubaki. Maharu requests him to tell everything about Sakuya. Tsubaki agrees and reveals the tragic life story. Sakuya was born in a town full of liars. His parents killed his elder daughter to get the insurance money and forced Sakuya to lie to the police. He started to blame himself for his sister's death. That was the first time Tsubaki met Sakuya who assured that he would come back to take him. Years later Sakuya met the same tragedy as his sister and Tsubaki turned him into a vampire. Subclass vampires are made by dying humans who drink Servamp's blood. Hearing this Maharu feels pity for his friend and rushes to school. Unfortunately, Sakuya has already dropped out and people have started to forget about him. The next day, Maharu spots Sakuya at the school festival and rushes after him. He tries to convince him that they are friends. But Sakuya can't leave Tsubaki as he was the first person who kept his words to him. But Maharu also matters a lot to him. He offered him a hand in friendship when Sakuya was suffering from loneliness. Sakuya needs some time to think over his life choices. Days pass by quickly and it's time for the summer break. A festival is going around in town and Tsubaki wants to use this occasion as a chance to kill people. Maharu is enjoying the festival when a subclass of Tsubaki hands him over a suitcase requesting it to deliver to lost and found. Maharu doesn't recognize him and proceeds to do what he said. On the way he realizes that the suitcase has a bomb in it. Fortunately, Maharu has met an Eve on the way who uses his indestructible coffin to dispose of the bomb. This Eve is Tetsu Sendagaya who's the master of the Servamp of Pride Hue. The Servamps are gathering to defeat Tsubaki. Later Maharu is kidnapped by C3, an organization of adults responsible for keeping peace between humans and vampires. Its member Shuhei Tsuyuki asks Maharu to join them to kill Tsubaki, but Maharu doesn't want to agree with their plan. Tsuyuki tells him to find the right gate out of 52 to escape and if he doesn't make it to Kuro in time, they both will die. Meanwhile Kuro is also being chased by C3 members. Maharu believes that sometimes the solution lies in the choices given by the adults. Saying this, Maharu breaks out from the ceiling and rushes to save Kuro. Unlike helping others, there's always a reason for hating others. Maharu wants to know the reason which made Tsubaki hate everyone so much. Maharu doesn't know much about Tsubaki himself. Therefore he gathers with two other Eves to investigate. Hugh has gotten information about a suspicious man so Maharu goes to follow him. He turns out to be an Eve named Lick Todoroki controlling the Servamp of Greed Lawless but they don't seem to be getting along. Lawless is the only Servamp known to kill his own master. Maharu offers them to join the league against Tsubaki but they refuse. However Maharu is still determined to persuade them. Licht is a popular pianist who came from abroad for a concert, but all the audience over there are actually subclasses of Tsubaki. Surprisingly, Lawless kills all of them one-handed. Lawless is not an ordinary vampire and he also knows secrets from Kuro's past. He uses them to enrage Kuro. A huge amount of negative energy starts radiating from Kuro which makes Maharu worry. Besides that, Lick's piano tunes also can make one suffer from past regrets. Luckily Lick's manager Rosen comes over to stop them. Maharu notices that one of Tsubaki's subclasses has survived and he takes her along with him. After the concert, Tsubaki abducts Lawless in the middle of the night. The next morning Licht wanders around to find him but is followed by Tsubaki's strongest subclass Higgin. Maharu comes over to save him but fails as Kuro doesn't feel well and converts into a black ball. Meanwhile Licht is taken away by Higgin. This time, Misono suggests Maharu to stay back while other servamps go to save Licht. They have very little time left as an Eve can die if he stays away from his servant for more than 24 hours. Maharu is finally able to talk to Kiro stuck in the ball. He apologizes for not being considerate enough and running away from facing Kuro. Rosen comes in to help the Eves. He also reveals some facts about Licht. In his childhood, Licht learned to play piano by himself and at a young age, he got the chance to play in front of an audience. The sound of his music was just angelic. However, he was quite nervous before the performance and his hair turned white. The white portion on his hair right now is the result of that incident years ago. While leaving the rescue of Lick to other Eves, Maharu decides to visit the Doubt Doubt and his Eve Makuni to find a cure for Kuro. Makuni owns an antique shop with a hidden lab where he and another scientist Johans research vampires. Makuni is actually Misono's brother but they don't get along well due to some reasons Makuni is quite an intellectual person. He tells Maharu that a servamp is generally immortal but they can be broken down by their subclass, or they can also be killed if someone destroys the gift a servamp got from his eve. In Kuro's case, it's the bell Maharu tied around his neck. Johans has an experimental plan to save Kuro. 
He tricks Maharu into drinking a liquid that takes Maharu inside Kuro's mind. Meanwhile, Misono has found the building where Tsubaki is. He's using the height of the building to keep licked and lawless away from each other. Rosen takes the information from the hotel's reception and Misono gets in the elevator to reach the highest possible floor but he's not alone there. Sakuya is right behind him. In a nearby forest, Tsubaki is distracted by the subclasses of lawless while the servamps are looking for licked in the hotel. The buttons on the elevator are inverted so Misono reaches the last floor instead. Surprisingly he doesn't find anyone there. Their assumption was wrong. Tsubaki hasn't separated Lawless and Licked and put them in neighboring rooms on the upper floor. Meanwhile, Maharu has reached inside Kuro's mind. There he finds a creepy creature who leads him to Kuro's deepest memories. There Maharu finds out about the truth Lawless mentioned. Years ago, the Servamps were requested by C3 to kill the human who created them. Three of the Servamps agreed as their creator is really dangerous and can produce thousands of other Servamps to disturb the world's balance. While the other three Servamps including Lawless were against this idea, the decision came down to Kuro. He favors C3 and takes the responsibility of killing their creator. Lawless considered that person as their parent therefore he never forgave Kuro. After seeing this Maharu talks to Kuro and asks him to stop running from the past and accept his mistakes. Kuro should stop looking for reasons to prove himself right and face reality. What is done can't be reversed but one can restrain from it in the future. On the other side, Lick breaks into Lawless's room and attacks him in anger. Wallace is done with Lick's inconsiderate behavior and reveals his whole story to him. Wallace's first Eve was a little princess Ophelia who grew along with him. One day Ophelia decided to marry into another country to ensure peace in the kingdom. Lawless's heart broke as he loved her dearly. The peace didn't stay for long after the marriage. The country ordered to sacrifice Ophelia so Lawless requested her to run away with him. In contrast, Ophelia was ready to face the sacrifice and wanted to become a model of peace. After her death, Lawless spent day and night near her statue. Once he had to go for a servant meeting but when he returned Ophelia's statue, and the whole country had already gone through destruction. Her sacrifice went in vain. Since then Lawless decided to go against the laws and rules of the world and assumed that no one matters to him anymore. Knowing this all, Licht starts playing his piano and tries to convince Lawless that he still contains emotions. He's curious about why Kiro killed their creator, and he cares a lot about Licht whom he chose as his Eve himself after killing his previous one. As the bonding between Lawless and Licht gets stronger, their strength increases too. They break through the room and face Higgin. While on the last floor, Makuni comes over to save his little brother and suggests Misono to go with Tetsu to save his friends. On the way they get encountered by Berkia and other subclasses. Berkia does a trick and hides Hugh away. Tetsu gets weaker without his servamp and it's not easy to face the subclasses now. Suddenly Maharu breaks in while riding a huge black lion. It's the actual form of Kuro he discovered after getting over his regrets. With this new power, Kuro beats up the subclasses easily. Lawless and Lick join them too after defeating Higgin. Kuro walks to Lawless and thanks him for not forgiving him and keeping him regretting the wrong decision he made. After this, the coldness between the two brothers finally ends. The servamps are discussing how to bring back Hugh when Tsubaki's subclass Lilac gets enraged as she gets free from Tetsu's coffin. She blames Maharu and his friends for killing the people Lilac considered her family. She jumps at Lawless and snatches away the necklace Lick gave him. Tsubaki gets there too and Lilac hands over the necklace to him. Now Lick's life is in the hands of Tsubaki. He throws the necklace in the air and shoots an attack on it but Lawless takes the attack on himself. After which, smoke starts to spread around everywhere. Kuro walks towards Tsubaki who recognizes him as the killer of their creator. He blames Kuro for not giving him a chance to speak before killing his victim. Kuro regrets what he did. That's why he wants to let Tsubaki talk before killing him. Kuro tells Tsubaki that the creator was becoming a threat to the present world that's why he took the decision but Tsubaki doesn't seem satisfied and gets more enraged. Spears start to fall from the sky terrifying the people outside. The C3 members have come over to evacuate the building. They have also rescued Hugh. Others leave the hotel but Maharu follows Kiro. Despite several attempts, Tsubaki is not ready to talk and attacks Maharu as well. Kiro gets triggered by this and takes his lion form. He presses Tsubaki under his paw but Maharu stops Kiro from killing him. However kindness had no effect on Tsubaki and he attacks Maharu but Sakuya saves him. Maharu changes his weapon into a key and gets to know what's in Tsubaki's heart. The creator was like a teacher to Tsubaki and the only person he knew on earth. Since the day he saw his creator getting killed by a huge lion, Tsubaki kept searching for the lion's real identity. 
he never expected that his servant's brothers would ever accept him and went into loneliness. This tragedy made him insensitive. Tsubaki breaks away from Kuro and is ready to fight back but Maharu rushes toward him and gives him a hug. This is what Tsubaki was after. He wanted acceptance and himself to be recognized. He puts down his attacks and lets Maharu go. After healing Sakuya, Tsubaki asks him to advise the other subclasses on his behalf to lead their lives however they want. He settles in after his disappearance and things come back on their track. People always look for someone to take the initiative but the world is going on because that someone appears who dares to face the odds. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.